Hi, well, I'm here with Amanda Marshall. Uh, Amanda and I met uh, a few years back when you were exploring finding a curacy, Amanda, and uh, it, you came to us to see whether or not it would work here, but didn't quite, and you've ended up over in Ashbourne. But it's great to have you with us Thank this you. morning. Um, why don't you start by telling us a bit about yourself and your family and how you ended up being a curer even today? Yeah. Well, probably the reason I came to see you, Steve, was because I knew you from Wilmslow. Uh, we knew each other when I, you were quite young and I was quite young, growing up in St. Lindo's, um, um, St. St. John's Lindo. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I went to school in Hanforth at um, the grammar school and then actually came to faith through Cheadle St. Mary's in um, uh, just not far away. Um, and from there, I went on to university in Nottingham and got married. And then we moved back to Macclesfield actually. Um, and while I was there, I was working at, over in Chester, Marks and Spencer's Financial Services, uh, marketing, that sort of thing. And I think many of our friends thought we would never go overseas, even though we'd both been involved in missional stuff for quite a long time. Um, but after six years um, of working in the church and doing lots of things with them, we used to run a band, a Christian band, and uh, we were managers of it. Um, uh, we set up a group that we called Up to Something that was aimed at 20s and 30s. Um, I did um, Sunday school and so on, and my husband was a deacon at the church. Um, after that, we decided um, we wanted to go and go to Bible College. And so we applied to All Nations um, mm -hmm. Bible College in um, Hertfordshire. And they said, oh, no, don't come to us yet. Go overseas. So we said, OK, we'll apply to some Bibles. Um, to submission societies applied to InterServe and they immediately said would, would you like to go to Nepal which was amazing because we literally just spent um, a, a long holiday three weeks in Nepal the year before mm -hmm. and when we came back through Pokhara um, with some friends they just said to us oh I'm sure you'll be back someday soon mm -hmm. and we looked at them and thought what are you talking about and then a year later we were we were basically in Nepal <laughs> Sorry. You can't you can't be a vicar properly, can you, anymore <laughs> no, with all this going on no. in the background? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so so then we spent um 10 years overall, including time at in um uh at all nations um in Asia. Uh first Just with tell us what, what were you doing in, in Nepal? Um we were very much um I would say um development workers really. Uh, we were very much involved in the church. We went to Nepali church. We learned the language and did five months language training. So both of us had reasonably conversational Nepali, um, but we, we were basically in a development, working for a development organization called United Mission to Nepal. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that they often said as a bit of their strap line was that every time they put in a development organization into a part of Nepal, a church would form as a result. Yeah. And I think the reason it formed was because Nepalis would come and say, why are you doing this? And then people would share their faith, but there was never a sense that we were allowed to um, proselytize in any mm. way that was written into our agreement. Mm. So we were very much there to support the fledgling Nepali church. Mm. And um, our role was to encourage them be, you know, just, I suppose to some extent friends that would come out would visit Nepali church and go back and pray for it and mm -hmm. so on mm -hmm. as well yeah and then, and then you went to All Nations College and then we went to All Nations yeah so we were the old old hacks <laughs> when we arrived there and using all our stories and things but actually quite a lot of us have had got other experience and it was amazing to do a bible bible college having been overseas it was much better to have done it that way mm. i don't recommend it and then we had another three years in nepal and then my husband who is a leadership development coach at the moment um was feeling more and more that he needed a bigger job mm. and he applied to world vision uh, again a development organization uh based in the us um but international and he ended up working for them in um Kathmandu, in bangkok Mm -hmm. And uh, that's at the time I was meant to go and work for World Vision as well um, in their Thai office. And then in the intervening time, I, I became pregnant with my third child and he was born in Bangkok. Yeah. 
So, so you had two children by the time you, in Nepal. You had two children. And two children in Nepal. Yeah, yeah, and, and then, then a third, a, in, a Bangkok. third in, in Bangkok. Yes, and I just we just heard today actually that he's been got uh, the offer at the university he wants to go to. So that was a yes. fantastic yeah. moment. Uh, yeah. So my eighteen-year-old. So it was eighteen years ago that we were there. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. so a bit of time uh, has passed since then. What happened? Yeah. Here? So we came back, my husband worked as HR director at World Vision UK, and um, I ended up having just done my master's in marketing, going and working for their marketing team. Mm. Um, I'm sure there's a little bit of a sense in me that I got in there. I did go through an interview process, but it probably helped that my husband was the HR director. <laughs> so I didn't stay there for very long. I think it was just to get my foot back into the world of marketing. And then I went, went to work for Scripture Union headed up their marketing team there mm -hmm. and um, had an amazing time had amazing some amazing stories at that time there really just doing lots of outreach mission and and probably it was the first time I got into holidays mm -hmm. camps mm -hmm. and um, I've since been on camps ever since so 15 years of camps mm -hmm. either cooking or just leading small groups or preaching or whatever and I have loved it and will continue to do that if I can yeah wow. Yeah. Yeah. but all of that was leading up to what you're doing now tell us about that project. yeah yeah going towards um i suppose uh one of the key difficulties in my life was um my son had um uh, potentially because of the, his delivery in thailand he had uh, quite a lot of problems really from the go get and um that sort of culminated in a time when i was at scripture union when I realized that I was spending too much time going off to see psychologists and doctors and specialists to try and sort out what's wrong with Zach. And um, I just wasn't coping and decided I would stop. And that was a really tough time, uh, leaving what was really a, a superb job. Um, but it was just too much for me. I couldn't fit in everything else. And I was trying to be a mum, three children as well. My husband had a big job. And uh, so I went and actually I didn't stop. I went and straight worked for the local university, but they enabled me to do that part time. And I went into their marketing team, um, actually headed up the marketing team as a short term thing. And then they extended it. And then I just took short, short term projects, really. I worked for CMS as well, which was also really interesting. Church Mission Society over in Oxford and loved that too. Absolutely loved that fundraising. And it ended up back actually at World Vision. But that time was significant because I think I realized that I couldn't control everything, that life was not perfect. Um, I don't think I'd ever seen it like that, but to some extent I felt a greater sense of having to depend on God. Mm. And I'm not saying that was a short-term thing by any means. It took me, I would say, five years of wrestling before I came to the point of saying to God, okay, over to you, it's in your hands. And I put my son into his hands. And that was a significant moment. And I would say that was the point where things unblocked and I suddenly started to think about ordination. Yeah. Never, never considered it before. I really never in my life considered it. Mm -hmm. And I would say I wasn't really at a great point. I wasn't, you know, had a quite a big job um, in my work life, but of course couldn't have much in terms of church. I think I was involved in Alpha, a home group, and I think I led a Bible, yeah, I led a home group, and, and I think I did teas and coffees at church, and that was all I could manage, and the holiday club that we did once a year. Mm. Um, but gradually, as I started to look at ordination, things opened up, we did a course about prayer and I realized that prayer was one of my giftings. I started to develop a sort of nascent gift of prophecy, words of knowledge started to develop. And it was almost like God had just sort of started to implant in me Christian leadership gifts. Because mm -hmm. actually, even when I first started thinking about ordination, I didn't think I'd be an incumbent. Mm -hmm. I think thought I'd go in through the deacon's role. And that came about as I was studied at Wycliffe in Oxford. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. So now you've been the curate for, for two years? 
two and a half, yeah. Two and a half years in, yeah. in Ashbourne. Uh, Ashbourne, yeah, yeah. And, uh, which has been um, lovely in many ways, tough in others. Um, lovely in the sense that my vicar has given me loads of opportunities. Uh, I've sort of led a church, um, uh, uh, Fresh Expression. Uh, I've looked at a, doing a church plant. I've um, done loads of schools work, loads of um, funerals, loads and loads of funerals, loads of baptisms. But the church was quite central, very sacramental. I had to robe all the time, which was just totally unusual for me. Um, lots and lots of liturgy. Um, and so what happened was all my sort of missional side got sort of diverted into the Ashbourne Churches Together movement. And so mm -hmm. I was involved there in sort of, um, we did a drive-in carol service this during the lockdown. We did um, a 24 seven as well in the lockdown. And um, I, I was involved in leading a whole, whole thing to do with um, uh, Thy Kingdom Come, yeah. the, the, the sort of prayer yeah. movement. So, yeah, I, and, and an alpha as well during lockdown. So, yeah, we, we've done sort of quite a lot in that sort of setting where I've been supported by other people, probably from more evangelical sort of churches. Mm, wow. Mm. And, I mean, nearly half of your curiosity has been in lockdown. So it's yeah, sort of yeah, quite, quite yeah. an unusual um, yeah. Sort of, yeah, experience. Um, so so uh, what do you see coming next? Where is God leading you? No. Yeah. Um, well, Steve, you know that, that we've bought some land in Cumbria mm. uh, uh, near um, Sedba, um, a place called Ravenstondale. And we've always spent all our holidays up in the Lake District. My family have a house up in Cartmel. And so it's an a, a area we love. And actually, we had intended to buy a holiday home here in the Peaks, but never found it. And then this place came up up there. So we kind of put our, a pin in that place up there and said we want to be an hour from there and we want to be an hour from my dad who's in Macclesfield and that pin sort of ends up being sort of the, the, the sort of the place where that coincides is sort of around Liverpool, um, Manchester, um, mm. uh, Burnley, Burnley, sort of that's Blackburn diocese that's, that's it yeah. and Chester diocese so yeah. we've been looking at those set four dioceses really down there. Mm. So you're hoping to stay in this sort of area then looking for a church uh, an incumbency next? Yes yes um, and I suppose I, I have talked to a few archdeacons and and I I sort of say with a bit of a wry grin on my face, well, you know, I am a woman and I am a little bit more elderly than some people. So that's going to make things more difficult. But I have got a real sort of desire for a church that's um, growing and open to God and um, more charismatic and wanting to, people want to reach out into their community and all these things that are, are things that we would love to have wouldn't we in our churches as you have in your own church Steve mm -hmm. um, but in reality the, the reality might be something quite different but I suppose I have a real confidence in God I have a confidence mm -hmm. that God will provide the church he wants me to be in I have a confidence that um, God is is in the business of seeing churches grow and he wants that to happen and even if it isn't growing at the moment I don't think he's going to send me to a church that won't see growth. I, I firmly believe that. And I've certainly seen it here, even the little things that I've done in terms of Alpha and the, um, you know, things like that, the prayer stuff. Yeah. I think it's so interesting that you spoke um, quite deeply about that um, time when you had to hand everything over to God, um, your son being at the centre of that. Oh. And that was a key turning point. And that trust in where God wants to take you has been largely born out of that handing yeah. everything over to yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. And it's a continual process. Yeah. I mean, I'm the sort of person that I like to control things. Mm -hmm. um, and God has taught me time and time again that the best person to control things is him. Yeah. And I need to leave it in his hands. So. Wow. That's, yeah. that's great. Thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, thanks for spending some time with us, Amanda. Uh, we'll be Not praying too. for you and your family Thank as you. you look to the next next role. But it's exciting to hear your yeah. story and where God's taking you and what God's yeah. done in your life. So yeah. thank you ever so much yeah. for spending some time with you. And Thank God you. Bless. Yeah. Thank you again. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Bye.